what's up youtube how's everyone doing today mm -hmm. i'm doing good hope you're doing good too today i'm gonna be reacting to top 10 things that are weirdly popular in britain i live in the united states in new york no i don't live in new york city the original video will be linked in the description so you guys can go and check that out if you like doing reaction videos i suggest checking out this channel and yeah let's just get into the video this goes way beyond toad in the hole welcome to watch mojo uk and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things that are weirdly popular in britain before we begin we publish new content every day so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos for this list, we'll be looking at things that are popular in Britain but can appear unusual to those from afar. As the saying goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure. What may be commonplace on our shores can seem peculiar, if not downright unacceptable, to other cultures. Hey. Number 10, mixing up the metric system. For the most part, we British have made the bridge from old to new and embraced the metric system, but we ardently refuse to measure long distances in anything other than miles. Britain birthed the imperial system in the first place and we're not about to relinquish it fully. Although we measure most liquids in litres, with milk and beer, we still like to use pints, or sometimes both pints and litres depending on the situation, pounds and ounces, or kilos and grams. It depends how we feel on the day. Confused yet? Yep, you should be. Number 9, roundabout. Wait a minute. You can I thought, um... I thought... You guys didn't use those ones, the ones that us Americans use. Pounds and stuff. Isn't, isn't the money in the UK called pounds? Like, five pounds or whatever for like dollars? I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but... going round in circles, and no, we're not referring to international diplomacy. Although France has the exclusive bragging right of having over half of the world's roundabouts, the UK has more per road than those across the channel, or than any other country. For we have some roundabouts here in, like, the bigger cities, and let me tell you, people do not know how to use them here. Everyone just thinks, like, you can go. As soon as you pull up, you can just go. Like, I'm pretty sure a roundabout is basically like a stop sign. You have to come up to the roundabout, stop, wait for the person, whoever came up first, you know. Yeah, we don't do that here. Um, at least in the area that I live in, people can't use roundabouts. Like, it's, it's just insane. Not matter. But are they really so necessary? Everyone else manages to avoid Blues Brothers style pileups without them. Perhaps they're just a long-standing joke made by British road designers, or an elaborate excuse to bust out the spirograph they got for Christmas last. Number 8, Cheeky Nando's. It's Friday night, and we're all feeling a bit peckish, lads. You know what that means. A Cheeky Nando's. Said no one outside of Britain ever. Sure, Nando's restaurants can be found oh, worldwide, but the chain has basically become a British institution. Just compare the UK's 280 plus branches to the much bigger USA's only 40 outlets. When you're a bit tired of Sunday roasts and fish and chips, some Portuguese style chicken dishes are the obvious alternative. Nando's marinades are available in supermarkets too, so you can have that peri peri perfection even if you're having a night in. That looks Number delicious. Seven, the garden shed. Inhabitants of more spacious nations may simply store their lawnmowers and other gardening equipment in their garages and such. But in the Garage. UK, every square metre, or that is, every square foot, counts, and a shed at the end of the garden can be highly practical. In addition to the norm, however, some residents have decided to pimp out their sheds, even adding some homemade bars, art studios, or saunas to them. If That's that a good idea. If extravagant enough, the phenomenon has been rewarded with a Shed of the Year competition. Number six, public drunkenness. We may be admired by the rest of the world for our many traditional English pubs, but with a lot of drinkeries comes a lot of drunkenness. And traditionally enough, we Brits have seemingly no shame in getting unabashedly intoxicated in public, particularly when there's a World Cup on. In fact, we can't do that here in the US. You cannot get drunk in public. 
like at all like you can't you cannot be drinking in public like you can be outside of your house drinking that's but but that's the most public you're gonna get when you're drinking here in the u.s i don't know 100 percent, but i'm pretty sure it is illegal to drink in public here so let me know americans if that is true any sporting events will do just fine cricket rugby darts the list goes on with the crowds getting merrier and merrier and that's not to mention music festivals or royal weddings or every lunch break at work number five the downstairs toilet not only are downstairs toilets untraditional in most places outside the uk they're often not even referred to as toilets at all Apparently, going to the bathroom is the more polite substitute for when one's in need of the lavatory. It's easily lost in translation for an outsider in Britain, though, as the so-called downstairs bathroom, as in toilet, doesn't usually include the supposedly expected tub and shower. But beyond that, the downstairs loo is actually seen as an ultra-convenience in the UK, negating the need to climb the stairs every time you need to go. Number four, football stickers. That one's just confusing Why me. collect stamps and have all those images of the Queen in a scrapbook when you can compile football stickers and have the likes of John Joe Shelby smiling out at you against a super shiny background? And if you don't have the album at hand, you can stick your favourite player on anything. The possibilities are endless. Many a football fan grew up desperately trying to complete their Premier League sticker albums. They were always seemed you were one David Seaman away from victory. It's a rite of passage, but it does get a little weird when grown adults shell out hundreds for that Derby County left back they desperately need. Oh. Um, we do that here in the US too. I don't know if it's very popular anymore, but I actually do have some from my grandpa. He collected baseball cards, so that is also I'm not sure now, but it is popular here in the US. 3. Eurovision Eurovision isn't the only thing in Britain that's popular despite us not being very good at it. See, international Eurovision. football. But all the same, the UK has won Eurovision far more times than the countries within it have taken the World Cup home, and far more recently as well. British entries to have conquered Europe's mushy pop scene through the years include Sandy Shaw's Puppet on a String in 1967 and Katrina and the Waves' Love Shine a Light in 1997. There have been some low points, but that won't stop us throwing Eurovision parties every single year for the rest of our lives, will it? Number 2. Pancake Day Shrove Tuesday was originally a day for Christians to make a confession to their priest ahead of starting... A lot of people might hate me for this, but I hate blueberries or any type of fruit in my pancakes unless it's strawberries on top of the pancakes. A 40 day fast. But similar to how Christmas has essentially become an annual excuse to binge on turkey, Drove Tuesday has become an excuse to shove your face with fried flour smothered in butter. Hence its better known name, Pancake Day. It is celebrated elsewhere, being more bluntly known as Fat Tuesday in the US, but not many take it as seriously as the British do. Until you've seen or compete in a pancake flipping race, you just haven't lived. Those pancakes Number one, mess. second hand stuff. Sure, everyone's got in on the act of purchasing and selling second hand goods for discount prices in the 21st century. But long before the internet took over everything, Brits were hoovering up deals at their local car boot sales. These aren't subtly trendy thrift stores a la America. They're good old fashioned, no nonsense, bring and buy bonanzas. If there's not a boot sale on, there's an abundance of charity stores to rummage through. And when we Brits aren't boot poking sale? around for the perfect pre owned purchase, we're watching daytime TV shows where people sell the contents of their attics for a profit. No bargain goes unhunted in these parts. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. A few of those things I feel like shouldn't be on the weirdly popular list because like some of those things that we do here in the United States as well just like the um, secondhand stuff, we do huge antique stuff, antique sales and everything like that. A lot of people sell their stuff like that through garage sales, but there's actually an antique store right here in town. 
and it's just you can bring your antiques there sell them get money and all that you know so that was a really good video go ahead and check out the original video in the description like comment subscribe to my channel please this is my first reaction video so let me know what you think you know let me know if i did good or not sub to my channel subscribe to that channel and have a lovely day